Hi there friends and welcome back. Um, Bar Pass going to paint for you tonight. This is a 16 by 20 deep canvas. I, uh, you know, I made a decision lately, I think, to paint some bigger paintings and to slow down. I do not need another painting, you know. <laughs> I'm overrun with painting. And sometimes, you know, it gets a little discouraging. You know, I'm sure creating more than I'm selling. Um, so I started one Monday on a 16 by 20. It's just a block in. I'll show you that one. Um, it's like a group of sheep. It's just a block in. Uh, that's a thin three quarter inch canvas. That one would have to be framed. I'll show you the image I'm working from tonight. I've cropped into it. I know it's a little hard to see because it's on the monitor. Two sheep. Um, that's what I've decided to do. It's a little difficult to get you lined up to see. Um, looks like to me you're seeing the whole canvas there, I think. I have to get you back pretty far to get one this size in, so hopefully that's okay for you. Uh, got my view catcher and we're just gonna again tonight all we'll be getting done is just the start of a painting you know there's no way in the world i'm going to get this done even when i do the 16 by 20s i mean the 8 by 10s that i frequently paint for you um sometimes they're done you know in the hour and a half or so that i do them but sometimes i go back to them um you know i always say that the way I start, you can, you know, continue on and on and on from that point to do a much more finished painting. It's kind of whatever you like. I painted uh, last Tuesday with a different group, and we paint from, we paint for like four hours, so I only had the 8 by 10 so I just worked on it the whole time. Um, would I normally do that? Maybe not, but I kept developing it, and... Uh, I didn't bring that one in here, but um, I think I turned out with a pretty nice painting by, you know, giving it more time. Uh, this Tuesday, I'm supposed to go out and plan air paint. We're supposed to warm up. That'd be the first time I'll be out. And it's with a group. So what I might do, I was thinking if I can tell myself to remember to do that, is do a couple of shorts that day. Shorts are something that you see now on YouTube. They're a very uh, short video. You have to film them at a different angle and they're real quick. I've done a few. If you look below, they're on here. So what I thought I might do on days where I don't have time to set up and let you watch the whole painting, maybe I'll show you the beginning, you know, the blank canvas and what I'm, what I'm going to paint, and then come back at the end of it and show you my finished painting. So still kind of fun, I think, even though you don't get to watch me do the whole thing. So anyway, we've got our view catcher set for the format that we have here. 8 by 10, 11 by 14, 16 by 20 are all the same format. And those are the sizes I tend to, to do. Uh, Wednesday, I hung the show at Sinclair Community College. Me and a gentleman that I know, Don Schuster, we hung about 50 pieces for the Arts Alliance Painters. And that show will open next Friday night if you live in or around the Mason, Cincinnati area. Uh, Sinclair College sponsors the Arts Alliance and in exchange for that they give them several shows a year. And this is a show I've talked to you about. It's um, Everyday Heroes and it's uh, anybody that offers services. So the show looks really good. I'm very impressed with it. Um, there's firemen and mailmen and policemen and, and some very common things. Um, I did a beauty shop here locally. It's anybody that offers a service. So uh, again, it opens next Friday, five to eight, I believe are the hours. And uh, yeah, I'm real excited about it. It'll be there a while too, if you don't get up for the opening. All right, we're gonna look over here. Actually, we don't need the view catcher. I don't know what I'm thinking. I use that more when I work from life. I'm just gonna use the handle of my paintbrush and look over there at the photograph and see where things are landing on the on the photo. Again, I've cropped in on two sheep. There's other ones that you can see in the background. 
I don't know that I'll worry about them. They're meeting together, but not quite halfway. I think about there, and the other guy doesn't go off. And his head's about there, top of his head. I just, I, you know me, I like animals and uh, then we're going to spend some time, we're no, in no hurry here. Again, we're not going to get, you know, very far tonight, probably a block in. You can see I've toned it with uh, acrylic like I usually do. I like that peeking through. You can see uh, I showed you the blocking on the painting that I started on Monday and uh, a lot of my, uh, I'll show you again, a lot of my tone is peeking through and I want to make sure not to cover it all up in the end. But that's just a block in, which means that I got paint all over the canvas. Some of the general shapes and colors and the sketch really, but with color. I run, um, can't see the legs, I ran it down off, but I can look at this negative shape down here with the grass peeking through, kind of help me. The little sheep that I did here on the, the little, where's he at? The little six by six I did here. Here, I'll grab that and show you that a couple times ago. Remember I did this guy. Um, got a lot of nice texture with a palette knife in it. See, I painted the edges. Um, I'll be doing something similar to these guys too. You know, they're, they're very wooly and we want them to feel that way. So again, I don't know how far we'll get, but you'll get to watch me play with it till I get tired of it, right? I am going to have a show at Pop Revolution in Mason here where I live. I stopped and talked to the owner and uh, I worked on the flyer. Wait, I'll show you the flyer. I'm not promoting the show yet. It's a, it's a month away, but um, I put the flyer together and um, There's the flyer. You might remember that painting. I kind of started that on, well, on location up in town. So it's about 25 paintings of my little town. And he'll blow that up and he'll uh, put that out in front of his store when the show that's up comes down. So again, I'm not opening until May 12th, which is the Friday before Mother's Day. And it'll be up for about a month. So I'm excited about that. I, you know, been working on these little paintings for years around my town. Of course, a lot of them are gone. I've sold them. And uh, when I was doing it, I wasn't really thinking about necessarily a, a show. Um, you know, I just go paint what I, what excites me for the day. But if this goes over well, I'll keep painting on my figure. Maybe in a couple of years we can do it again. Um, if I'd have definitely been doing it for a show, I would have made sure to have painted the whole main street probably. But, you know, again, that isn't what I was doing. I go down there and set it where I'm comfortable. And uh, some of them, of course, are the main drag, but some of them are kind of off the beaten path, old houses. and. Well, nice things going on in my life. Today was the opening of the Cincinnati Women's Art Club annual jury show. That's their big show of the year. If you're down near Marymount, stop and check that out. I'm 
imagine it's going to be up for a while. I did not get down there, but I'd like to see it. Did not enter that one. kind of thinking what our show will be next year at Sinclair. I'll tell you when it's a definite thing, but it's it's pretty cool, I think. If you just like to watch people paint, that's great, you know, and you don't paint yourself, but if you do, um, or you've thought about it, you ought to Give it a go. My gosh, it's wonderful, and uh, everybody needs a passion in their life. If it's not the paint, you can draw or keep it simple. Just sketching. There's sketch groups around that uh, I know down in Cincinnati, urban sketch groups, and they meet and sketch. and. Uh, The other one I'm doing, you can see a whole lot of sheep in. It's a herd of sheep. <laughs> a herd of sheep. Aren't they a herd? Even though I like things very painterly, um, just kind of in the mood to spend more time and and develop these further so I may you know you may see this several times I watched and I don't know which one it is portrait painters of the year today it's filmed over in like the UK I like watching that I don't know if you've ever seen that but um, they were painting two two people and uh, they've got landscape artist of the year and portrait artist of the year and they compete and compete and keep narrowing it down and and then they get a big commission at the end I think I like it I like it pretty well sometimes I do not agree with the judges of course and sometimes the judges almost make like it almost make it sound like there's something wrong with being a a good representational painter you know like they want to see things more exciting and I don't think anything beats really good good painting I just I don't always agree with them let me zoom in on that head a little bit and the thing is, I've cropped in on this photo so much that um, it's not real clear, but that's okay. This is from Reference Free Photos, by the way, off of Facebook. You know, I, I have sheep photos, but I don't have, I don't have anything as good as this, so. So it looks like we're kind of seeing some of that eye. We won't be framing this so there's no harm in running it close to the edge. Normally I wouldn't do that because the frame would they call it a pinch point. Say if you ran it, you know, to here and your frame came to here. You don't really want to do that. You have that awkward little space. So, you know, if it's going to be close, I would run it off, but in this case there's no frame, so shadow frames are really nice. I don't use them but I really like the way they look um, it's where you 
sometimes you'll paint the edge and then the frame comes up on the side of the canvas. I'm sure you've seen them. And I've watched people mount into them and they screw into the stretcher bars, I think, when they put them in there. I bought me one of those staple guns recently. I've been having fun with that, framing things. Yeah, again, I, we do not have a great image here. It's hard to tell what I'm even seeing, actually. That's his back end. There is another head right there, which we're not putting in. I used my tube roller before we started and emptied a few tubes of paint. I love that thing. I have that metal tube roller. I squirted out the cobalt blue and it blew all over my palette. I don't know why. It was a little stiffer consistency. That thing's great though if you don't have one. I think it's worth the money because you really can get the paint out of your tube. putting in some of the darks where I see them. And he runs, this guy runs clear off on this side. Make sure we get these eyes high enough. I think they're a little higher. He's got like woolly stuff on his head. And his ears, probably somewhat bigger than I have them. I like the uh, white-headed sheep. back end's a little confusing, isn't it? Let me see if I zoom in, if I can tell any of it. It's all just kind of blown out. It's really hard to tell what I'm seeing back there. So, you know, I have to make sense of it. So I may have to, I may even, we'll see how it works. I may have to feel like I'd pull him behind him for it to feel right. Whatever we need to do, you know. Well, what we're going to do is uh, pre-mix some color. When I look at those sheep, of course, uh, he, they're white, but typical white sheep. They're very dirty. I see yellow in there. I see browns, uh, burnt sienna kind of colors. I think I'll bring you over and we'll we'll just mix some color together. Let me angle you down. See how I shot the cobalt blue all over? <laughs> Alright, so you know they're white. They're not white white, but so let's just put a good amount of white out there. We got two big sheep here to get blocked in, okay? Um, I actually have some yellow ochre on here today, which I don't always have. Let's try some transparent red oxide in there and some yellow ochre. I'm looking over there. I want to give myself, again, I want a lot of different values. This is some of the dark that we made 
or a sketch. Let's throw that into some of that. Maybe a little more ultramarine. Get something for the darkest areas. And some crimson. I'm just trying to get darker. More blue. You know, I don't just want a boring color though. You know, you want them to be attractive. More transparent red oxide. Again, we're just trying to get a variety of colors going here. And values. I don't want to use any pure white, you know. That right there has got some of that and the white, but it's still pretty light. Oh, I'm sure we'll be mixing lots and lots more paint. But that'll get us started. We've got the four values. Um, Just again, give myself, whoops, hang on there, some options. Get you where you can see it, I hope. I'm cranky. Bigger can I just don't typically paint this large for you, and it's tricky. I did that uh, 24 by 30 a long time ago on YouTube here, and uh, we had to do like sections of it when we painted. Okay, well let's uh, get us a brush here and we will, we're going to start with the darkest part of them. Got a Rosemary and Company brush. And we'll go over um, and reinforce these darks. That's pretty cool. Do we like that or do we want to warm it up a little bit? I think we'll put a little more transparent red oxide in it, make it a little warmer. I mean, it doesn't really matter, you know, I'm looking more at value and again, we want, we want them to be interesting, so. So just going over the darks that we introduced in there and, um, you know, giving them a little color. And I've been making new paint all the time, so like there, that mixture is different. Change things up. It will be out at a farm Tuesday where I painted at this farm a few times, but um, again, I'll try to remember to, you know, I thought it might be fun for a short to show you what I'm painting and then again, come back at the end and show you the finished painting. That's what I'm thinking. I love farms, just, you know, lots of barns and sheds and there's a pond there and uh, just lots of options. Farms and old houses, that's probably what I love the most. Some of the people in the group, you know, they love landscapes and they're very happy to paint across a field looking at trees. Matter of fact, that seems to be their preference for some of them, but a little bit of that's okay, but I get more excited by a sunlit house or a barn or when I have plenty of dark in here, you know, I'd rather have more than I need. 
And I know this isn't as much fun. We're not going to be finishing this tonight. I just can't. Of the 25 paintings going into the gallery here in town, um, 20 of them are only 8 by 10s because most of them are plein air pieces. And then uh, there's an 11 by 14 and some of those long panoramic ones like, well, like the one I showed you on the postcard, there's a few of those. And uh, so hopefully we'll have some sales. It's a bite to be in a gallery, you know, they take 30, 40, 50 percent, you know, they're all different. And, you know, and I still want, I want to sell, so I want to be fair on the pricing and so I'm not, in some cases, I, you know, I'm not thrilled with what I'm getting out of them because I don't want to overprice them either. I want, again, I want to have some sales, so, um, And I want him to have some sales too, you know, the gallery owner. This, um, the guy that owns this gallery, sweet guy, he's a framer, printer, talented, busy young man. And uh, one of the paintings in our show that opens next Friday is of him. Um, you know, you could do what anything you wanted, really, anything you felt was a service. And this person did him with his cat. And uh, I was in there talking to him and just said, we hung the show. I said, it looks really good. I said, you know, it's just everything. I said, policemen, firemen, mailmen. And he said, and me. I said, yes, and you. So we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, not the best photo really because like this area is really blown out. You know, I can't really see texture, although I'm sure if you were there looking at them in person you could, you know. I guess because of, of all the light, it just looks to be white. I'm going to get a little lighter with some of this, even though they're darks. I want, I want a little more color in them, so we'll make it a little more blue. Again, when you're just mixing and mixing and mixing, you get a variety of colors, which is good, but this over here was so much darker than my darks over here, and again, my goal today is just to get, get them blocked in. All right, so let's step down to something lighter, but not light. The one that had more ochre in it. Yeah, again, I'm going to think about my light. He looks lighter on the back here, and the faces are nice and light. So I want to reserve. It looks like he's catching light over here. I wish they were better photos. But again, when you blow in, go into him like I did, you know, I cropped into it. It it uh, it changes things too, of course. Happy Easter to you. That's tomorrow. Wow. Time just flies. 
But we are warming up here finally. I'm so happy about that. Supposed to be this week all in the 70s and We may even, you know, feel like we need to come back in and put more darks in later. Again, this is not going to be an alla prima. This is going to be a mini, mini session painting. This canvas had some red on it even. Years ago, um, Dick Glick sent me uh, a bunch of canvases to test for them. and. Uh, I still have a couple of them left. This is one. A little lump there. That I had to do try paint on them and fill out questionnaires. They were a variety of uh, different types of canvases. But that was kind of cool. I got to keep the canvases and over the years I've used them. This is some of our lighter mixture there. See, he's catching light here. photos aren't great but I think the light source is maybe more from above because it looks like it's hitting him here and here so that kind of looks like you know it uh, again is coming more from that direction well, we're just jumping around You know, till you get paint on the canvas, you can't really do anything. So, wrong or right, you know, you got to get it covered up and. Uh, who is it? I, Craig Nelson that I watch talks about. Just assume you're doing it right. You know, don't just keep moving and assume you're doing it right. I mean, you'll figure out later on if you haven't laid down things correctly. But make the assumption in the beginning that you have and. Uh, go from there. I said his whole back is, is pretty light. Um, it's very confusing. I don't know. I have to make it work somehow. I have to run him back behind the other one to make it feel right. 
you know, let's face it, it's going to be more about their faces than anything, you know. That's the part people are going to enjoy looking at. Put a little solvent-free liquid in there. So it moves around a little bit better. Like I said, I kind of get the sense that it uh, the light's kind of coming from above and hitting both sides of them. Again, this is a block in, so I'm mostly just getting paint on the canvas, kind of in the in the right value. I mean, everything will be painted over again. I'm quite sure. So, no judging too harshly. on both of these guys is kind of a pink. You know, and I may even want to get, um, sit down and get a really good photo of a sheep and get right in that face and really work it with all animals. You know, the face is the most important part. a big family so I'm looking forward to tomorrow my daughter does Easter and uh, we have an egg hunt for the kids we even have a um, <laughs> an adult egg hunt anybody that wants to brings you put together these little gift bags of uh, whatever you want to give I've got candy and little bottles of liquor and and then we us adult hunt, hunt eggs and you might get you know four or five depending on how much has been brought it's just silly after the kids hunt anyway the adults hunt something we've been doing the last several years isn't that funny <laughs> and I may not have his f face long enough at all we'll have to see I feel so maybe I don't And we could have used a bigger brush, you know, and block this in a whole lot quicker. 
I do have this brush laying here, this uh, gesso brush. This is the kind of thing that Craig Nelson uses to block in most of his paintings. He does a pretty good sized painting in an hour and a half on Fridays on Facebook. And I had that out because I did use that. Uh, I did use that on the painting, the other one on Monday, to help me get it blocked in quicker. Get some pink in there on the ears. Again, ain't nothing done here, so. even though I want it to be painterly. You know, I'm going to want these guys to feel pretty real, so as long as that takes, you know. And we're intermixing colors because I'm not really cleaning my brush. here. So funny. And I want to explain their eyes, you know, get into nice detail like I do with my pet portraits. I just thought I'd show you how I, you know, start something like this. Wild, isn't it? You know, we could take um, our brush and do some blending, even and blend some of these. Just not concerned about anything at this point. Again, I'm just trying to get some paint on the canvas.
so many adjustments to make. I can see that. Yeah, his face is too... Well, his eye needs to be higher, I can see that. Their eyes are surprisingly high, more than you might think. There's a gentleman I like, Cunningham, I think is his name, that I follow on uh, Facebook, and he does some sheep paintings too. They're just beautiful. A lot of good animal painters out there. Girl on, I've mentioned her before on uh, Instagram, Jen, like Jen underscore art, something like that. And uh, oh, she does a fabulous job on animals. Just wonderful. There's always somebody better. From this distance, see, I can't really see. It looks to me like I can see the top of that ear. Yeah, so much work to do. I'm going to have to like sit down and really get my face in here and uh, and work on this. Yeah, the eye is pretty high. It's about up here. And this one's up here, like in the ear. Real high, it's like up in there. And this one, I think we can see a little bit of it. And this one, they're real high, they're way up there. I don't think I had them high enough. And in the background, it's probably going to be probably just green, probably shades of green, I'm thinking. <coughs> So I know this isn't very exciting. Again, it's just the block in, and uh, but I'll be sitting down, just developing ahead, taking my time, and I do still maybe feel like his nose has to come down a little more. Yeah, I kind of feel like this needs to come down a little bit, too. So, we'll get him, though. I mean, again, I'm not in any hurry. I don't need this for anything in particular. So. And toward the end, like I said, we'll probably get our palette knife in there like we did on the little one and uh, get some nice texture. I think that really works good with a sheep. There's all kinds of little you know, tufts of, well, wool, right? So, I think it'll be fun. It'll be a long time, and I gotta work out this deal with the back here. I think this needs to come in. Again, it's hard to see, but I think this neck needs to come in more. And this is light. But I gotta be careful, you know, as I make all these adjustments too, that I don't hide all my tone. You know, I won't mind at all seeing some of that peeking through, so. 
you know, I don't want to go so crazy that I lose all that, so. All right. We got started, so. I'm sure this is hard for you to tell where I'm going with this, but. Um, I appreciate you watching, and. Uh, you know, maybe we'll bring it back from time to time and keep developing it, or I'll develop it and, and show it to you for sure. Um, but again, my thought lately is just to slow down and get a few bigger paintings under my belt and take more time. I don't know about you, but I really, God, I just have hundreds and hundreds of paintings. I got a bag there, I'm going to throw some away even. As far as painting over them, once in a while I'll do that, um, but not too often. Um, if they're thin, sometimes I'll scrape them down and, and paint over them again. But sometimes I just throw them away. I always say it's an artist's right to throw their work away, right? I'll show you just a few. Let me take you off of here, I'll show you some of the many, many, many paintings I have. They're all across there, under there, on the shelf there. They're drying down there, sorted paintings there. Some on the shelf there. And that's like double paintings, and there's a row of paintings behind those paintings. And then there's all these on the wall. You know, these are the ones for the show that's coming up. And then behind us, too. I mean, my gosh. See? Just everywhere. It gets scary sometimes. But I just keep creating them because that's what we do. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I know this is just kind of a mess, but it's a, it's a block-in. And uh, that was my intention tonight. So you still having trouble seeing the image. I was trying to. Boy, it just blows it out, doesn't it, on the iPad. But yeah, it'll be fun. Be a fun challenge. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to join me. I hope you got something out of it. I mean, again, you know, you know I'm not committing to anything at this point. It's just a block in, and it's just, I always say, I got the canvas cover with paint. I mean, that's, that's progress. All right, catch me next time. Have a nice night. Oh, happy Easter again. Like and subscribe, too. Good night.